Hi, I'm Michael Mintz, the creator of the Selenium-based test automation framework, and today I'm going to talk to you about the 17 unique syntax formats for structuring your Selenium-based tests. To get started, head over to the Selenium-based GitHub page and click on Syntax Formats from the list of options you have. That will take you to this page where you will see the list of all those syntax formats. Now, these 17 syntax formats are really more of design patterns that you can use for structuring your tests in different ways depending on whether or not you like the page object model or a simple structure or other types of formats. So I'm now going to go through one by one so you can see what those are. The first syntax format is base case direct inheritance. Now this format is used by most of the examples in the Selenium Base Examples folder. It's a great starting point for anyone learning Selenium Base and it follows good object-oriented programming principles. In this format, base case is imported at the top of a Python file followed by a Python class inheriting base case. Then any test method defined in that class automatically gains access to Selenium Base methods including the setup and teardown methods that are automatically called the spin up and spin down web browsers at the beginning and end of test methods. So here's an example of that. So here, as you can see, from Selenium Base import base case, then you define your class, and that class must inherit base case, and then you're going to create a test uh, method, and make sure that this test method that you create starts with test underscore, because that is the format for uh, PyTest auto collection uh, for tests that are run with PyTest. And then you can use all the available Selenium based methods, such as self.open to open URL, self.type to type text into a text field, self.click, etc. So that's the first of the syntax formats. The next one is base case subclass inheritance. Now, there are situations where you may want to customize the setup and teardown of your tests. Maybe you want to have all your tests log in to a specific website first, or maybe you want to have your tests report results through an API call depending on whether a test passed or failed. This can be done by creating a subclass of base case and then carefully creating custom setup and teardown methods that don't overwrite the critical functionality of the default Selenium base setup and teardown methods. Afterwards, your test classes will inherit the subclass of base case with the added functionality rather than directly inheriting base case itself. So here's an example of that. So here you still have from Selenium base import base case, but you'll create a separate test class that inherits base case and then you can overwrite the setup and teardown methods that are included, which are automatically there even if you don't define them. So if you're overwriting the setup, make sure you call the super method, which basically calls the constructor. And this is where uh, the setup method will spin up the browser automatically. If you need to do something after the browser is spun up, but before your tests actually start, you can add that custom code here. There's a similar story with the teardown method. First, you want to make sure you save the teardown screenshot before you do anything, because if you uh, have a teardown that takes you to a different page uh, and your test failed, the screenshot that you would get would not be on the same page where the error occurred. So make sure you call self.save teardown screenshot first if you're overriding the teardown method. And then you can customize it, such as if there is an exception, you can run custom code if your test failed, or uh, with the else statement, run code if the test passed. And this is a great place to put an API call. For instance, if you're trying to uh, send your test results to a uh, test case management tool, and there's an API for that, you can send a uh, failed test result through here and a passing test result through here. And at the very end of that teardown method, you want to call the super base test case self teardown method. And just keep in mind, this base test case here should match uh, the name of your class here. 
And now you can also define other methods that you may want to use, such as a login method that maybe all your tests will call, or other methods. And then inside an example test, so for instance here we've created a class my tests that now inherits base test case instead of base case. And now there you can have your test method that calls the login method that you defined and as well as any other methods and all your selenium based methods as usual. So that was the second syntax format. The third syntax format is the SP PyTest fixture with no class. Now the PyTest framework comes with a unique system called fixtures which replaces import statements at the top of Python files by importing libraries directly into test definitions. More than just being an import, a PyTest fixture can also automatically call predefined setup and teardown methods at the beginning and end of test methods. To work, SB is added as an argument to each test method definition that needs Selenium-based functionality. This means you no longer need to import statements in your Python files to use, use Selenium-based. If using other PyTest fixtures in your tests, you may need to use the Selenium-based fixture uh, seen here instead of base case class inheritance for compatibility reasons. Here's an example of the SB fixture in a test that does not use Python classes. So this is the entire Python file. There's no import anymore because you have SB here, which is the PyTest fixture. And now uh, that automatically gets access to Selenium-based methods. So as you can see here, you can do sp.open instead of self.open. And that is the new way that you would be calling your Selenium-based methods. So this is the SB PyTest fixture with no class. Additionally, uh, for the next syntax format, you can use the SB PyTest fixture in a class. So uh, there's a slight change to the syntax because that means test methods must also include self in their argument definitions when test methods are defined. The self argument represents the class object and is used in every test method that lives inside of a class. Once again, no import statements are needed in your Python files for this to work. Here's an example of using the SB fixture in a test method that lives inside of a Python class. So here I've defined a class and now I immediately create the uh, method, but the difference is you have to add the self argument right here and that represents the class. So, so every time you have a test method inside of a class, the first uh, argument to that must be self and then you can include uh, the SB PyTest uh, fixture and you'll use SB again to call all slending based methods. Uh, there's also the classic page object model with base case inheritance. With Selenium Base, you can use page objects to break out code from tests, but remember, the self variable from test methods that inherit base case contains the driver and all other framework specific variable definitions. Therefore, that self must be passed as an arg into any outside class method in order to call Selenium Base methods from there. In the example below, the self variable from the test method is passed into the SB arg of the page object class method because the self arg of the page object class method is already being used for its own class. Every Python class method definition must include the self as the first arg. So here we have from Selenium Base Import Base Case, and we're creating our page object class login page. And there's a function definition in here, login to swag labs. And you'll see self as the first argument. It'll also include SB and username. And you see as we're calling SB methods, SB.open, et cetera, uh, those are all called with SB instead of self. And here's the test class that inherits base case, as you've seen before. But when you use like the page object method, such as login page, you'll do login page dot and say the method that you define here, login to swag labs, but keep in mind that you must pass in the self into that page object because the self variable contains all the Selenium based specific code that is needed to control the browser and everything like that. 
And here I'm also passing in an additional arg, for instance, the username, standard user here, which I use on this line here when I type in uh, the username into the username field. So that is essentially uh, the classic page object model with base case inheritance. Next, we have the classic page object model with the SB PyTest fixture. And this is similar to the classic page object model with base case inheritance, except this time when we pass the SB PyTest fixture from the test into the SB arg, the page object class method. Uh, that's basically what we're doing there. Now you're using SB as a PyTest fixture, and you no longer need to import base case anywhere in your code, such as in the example below. Uh, this is probably going to be the same as here, but the key difference uh, here is that now when inside your, say, class my tests, uh, which no longer inherits base case because you're passing in the SB fixture into a method that starts with test underscore, and PyTest recognizes that as, okay, I'm going to use SB as the fixture that we've defined previously, and now when I call login page, I'm going to pass in SB instead of self like we did before in this line here. So here in uh, syntax format number five, we passed in the self because we are using base case inheritance. With number six, we are passing in SB instead. And that's basically the only difference going on there. Uh, some of the lesser common syntax formats are, for instance, number seven, using the request fixture to get the SB fixture with no class. Now here, the PyTest request fixture can be used to retrieve other PyTest fixtures from within tests, such as in the SB fixture. This allows you to have more control over when fixtures get initialized because uh, the fixture no longer needs to be loaded at the very beginning of test methods. This is done by calling request.getFixtureValueSB from the test. Here's an example of using the PyTest request fixture to load the SB fixture in a test method that does not use Python classes. So as you can see here, there's no import statement, but we use the request fixture. Now, on the very next line, we can initialize SB by saying request.getFixtureValueSB and now we can use SB just as we did with the SB fixture, uh, calling all the Selenium-based methods as we want. Additionally, uh, you can use the request fixture to get the SB fixture in a class. And that looks like this, pretty much. You have your class. And now inside your definition for the test, you'll have self as the first argument and then request. And everything then pretty much goes the same way sb equals request.getFixtureValue sb, and now you're able to use all the Selenium-based methods through that. Now, the remaining syntax formats are basically just Selenium-based translated into multiple languages. See here, from Selenium-based.translate.chinese, you can import the Chinese base case, and now the entire test following all uh, Python rules of syntax so that you're not breaking any rules there, you can pretty much have most of that be in Chinese, but some things of course will still be in English such as class, because that's a Python keyword, def, that's a Python keyword, from and import, those are Python keywords, and technically self is the uh, standard for uh, the representing the class inside the test definition. So you're going to have that. But the rest, uh, we can use now the Selenium-based translated methods, which are now in Chinese. And for number 10, uh, it's the same thing, but in Dutch. For number 11, the same thing, but in French. For number 12, the same thing, but in Italian. For number 13, the same thing in Japanese. For number 14, the same thing in Korean. For number 15, the same thing in Portuguese. And number 16, the same thing in Russian. And number 17, the same thing in Spanish. So to sum up, these are the 17 unique syntax formats for structuring your Selenium-based tests. 
And uh, whenever you want to design like a new test, uh, you can basically follow one of these patterns and it, they all work uh, to their own strengths. And if I want to run a test, so for instance, I want to run uh, the first test seen here just because uh, I'm creating a tutorial and I should run at least one test so you can see something happening. Let's run uh, the test demo site from the examples folder. So PyTest test demo site. And this is going to spin up a browser and basically run the test using the first of the 17 syntax formats. So now that the browser is spun up, you'll see it's going to type in text automatically, hover drop down, click buttons, uh, move sliders, check boxes, radio buttons, iframes, links, etc. Uh, all that is basically included, and that was just the example of the very first syntax format that we did here with base case direct inheritance. And if you're curious about seeing that entire test that we just ran, uh, that is test demo site from the Selenium Base examples folder, which goes to the SeleniumBase.io demo page and then performs all the actions that you see here. So that pretty much covers uh, this tutorial, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and star the Selenium Base repo on GitHub uh, whenever you get a chance to. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, open an issue on GitHub or go to GitHub Discussions. Or uh, you can also uh, reach me via the Gitter chat and any other options that you see listed here. Well, that covers this tutorial, and thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next time for the next exciting Selenium-based tutorial. Thank you very much, and have a great day.